Doom 2016 was a phenomenal game and set its standards really high for its sequel, but can Doom Eternal meet those standards? Well in today's video, let's find out. Against all the evil that hell can conjure, all the wickedness that mankind can produce, we will send unto them only you. Rip and tear until it is done. As Hugo Martin put it, the fun zone of Doom 2016 is playing aggressive, switching guns, chainsawing and glory killing demons which has all made its glorious return in Doom Eternal. Now you can set your enemies on fire to regain your shields, the chainsaw now regains its fuel after a while and there are new and returning demons for you to rip and tear. Doom Eternal splits its demons into four categories, ambient, fodder, heavy and super heavy. Ambient demons stay in one place like the hentai monster. The gargoyle is one of the new fodder demons. It is very similar to the imp apart from one very important detail. They can Naruto run. <laughs> heavy demons vary a lot from the cybermancubus to the BTEC imp. The heavy category is also the largest. And finally, super heavy demons are the most annoying demons in the game. With all these new demons, the Doom Slayer has been given some new Predator-inspired upgrades. The Shoulder Cannon is a multi-purpose tool which allows you to fire grenades, which are pretty useless, but there are also ice grenades which allow you to freeze your enemies so you can get a much needed breather. Using Flame Belch will set enemies on fire which will make them drop armour, adding to the minigame of resource management within Doom. This time you get double jump straight away at the start of the game. Dash can be used to dodge enemy attacks and it is used frequently in parkour sections. Weapon mods return, but this time none of them are useless. Some advice, get the mastery on the super shotgun as soon as possible, I don't think I could have completed the gladiator boss fight without it. Trader suit upgrades are pretty useless and don't substantially affect your experience. Runes are the big game changers, there are 9 to unlock and you can only equip 3. The 3 I equipped were punch and receive, which gives you health from blood punches. Saving throw slows down time when you're at 1 HP, which was a saving grace at times. Air control, the clue is in the name. Finally, maker crystals give you more ammo, health and shields. The levels in Doom have a lot less of, you walk into a room, bad people spawn, you kill them all, like Doom 2016, but there is still a loss of it, like 60%. The game is that. Platforming is used to segment the game, I think this is where a lot of the complaints about the pacing come from. At times it was really infuriating because it felt like the physics engine wasn't made for some of the platforming which led to frustration. But overall, the platforming was a nice change of pace. That's good and all, but how does the moment to moment gameplay feel like? Well, the best way I can describe this is it feels like you are playing the end cinematic for Doom 2016. Gameplay is really chaotic but in a good way, however for the first 2-3 missions it does feel more like Doom 2016. It also added a help world. The Fortress of Doom allows the player to both unlock and view cosmetics and upgrades. Also in the Fortress of Doom there is the Ripiatorium which allows you to rip and tear lower class demons. Now the negatives because I want to end the video on a high note. Battle mode is an unbalanced and buggy mess, there are moments where you'll just freeze in place due to the slightest bit of ping. You'll be doing your thing at max health and then all of a sudden an enemy will start rubber banding all over the place and you'll explode and die completely and utterly out of nowhere. That is what my experience of playing battle mode within matchmaking has been like. It is definitely designed for you to be playing with your friends within a party. Overall the game is a lot less polished than Doom 2016. For example, I have clipped through walls on several occasions whilst performing glory kills. The final boss fight with the Icon of Sin is really anticlimactic. First time you fight him, he runs away. The second time, you defeat him. And when you defeat him, you think to yourself, oh, I'm gonna kill him in the glory kill now, it's gonna be pretty cool. But then he dies in a cutscene.
I knew the final boss fight was going to suck, like killing 343 Guilty Spark in Halo 3, but you don't even kill him in gameplay like you do in Doom 2. Although saying that, I can't think of any way it could have made the boss fight better. Doom 2016 barely had a story, but this time, Doom Eternal is loud and proud about it. Sadly, the optional in-game scenes from Doom 2016 have sadly been replaced in Doom Eternal, however it does help the game to flesh out and properly tell its story. I heavily recommend reading the lore of the games before playing the campaign. Before Doom Eternal came out, I casually looked into the lore of Doom and I know a good chunk of the lore, but I still got confused about some of the things that were going on. Who is this guy? What are they doing? Etc. The story overall is nothing mind blowing, it's just there to tell you why you're doing what you're doing. Mick Gordon's soundtrack is the glue that holds Doom Eternal together. Somehow he's managed to improve on Doom 2016's superb soundtrack. Fan favourites return like BFG Division and At Doom's Gate. These songs beautifully complement new songs like Slayer's Gate and Doom Hunter and all these songs come together to make honestly the best soundtrack in gaming history. What I described earlier about the gameplay would not be possible without Mick Gordon's masterful soundtrack. Stop! No! Just stop it! I see you there commenting about how the title of this video is clickbait. And well, admittedly, it is a bit, but in my defence, if I said Why Doom Eternal could or might be game of the year it wouldn't be that quick worthy but if i said it will be game of the year you're like oh my god game of the year it's going to be game of the year wow and also i did put review in brackets in regards to game of the year there are two scenarios one cyberpunk 2077 comes out two because cd project red have never released a shooter cyberpunk will turn out like fallout 3 the gameplay will be absolutely awful because the developer had never made a shooter ever before so they don't know how to make it. It's in that case, Doom Eternal will get Game of the Year. In conclusion, Eternal is objectively the best first person shooter I have ever played. Although a bit rough around the edges, it is still a must play game, but please play 2016 first. For your fight is eternal.